What's going on today guys? I'm your host Weaver Beats for BassGorilla.com and today I'll be showing you guys some basics on compression. This will include compressors, limiters, multiband compressors, and Ableton's compressors and limiters. Compression is a process of lowering the dynamic range of an audio signal. Dynamic range is the range from the highest to lowest sounds. This is done by boosting the quieter signals and lowering the louder signals. Compression is used for a few things, but to put it simply, it's used to control volume. You can use it to bring down peaks that are too loud or bring out sounds that are too low. There are two types of compression to determine which way it's behaving. Downward compression reduces loud sounds that are above a threshold, and upward compression boosts audio below a threshold. Alright, so what is compression used for? Why do we even care? So, in public places, usually background music is highly compressed in order to keep it from peaking out too loud or in order to keep the low sounds from being overtaken by the ambient noise. So it just keeps that one consistent signal in the background. And music production, compression is used to make performances sit more in the mix to keep things more consistent, you know, without having to manually go in there and edit everything. Vocal performances in pop and rock music are usually compressed to improve the clarity, something worth knowing. In electronic dance music, compression is very common. You hear it all the time. You probably don't know though. It's used extensively in broadcasting to boost the sound. In marketing, television commercials are often overly compressed, basically making it as loud as possible while still being within the limits. Now we're going to talk about the overusage of compression. So over the years, record companies, mixing engineers, mastering engineers have been increasing the loudness of songs and therefore the compression of songs in order to get that loudness higher. It's resulted in something known as the loudness wars. That being said, today I'll teach you guys something awful. How to compete in the loudness wars. Over the years, songs have gotten louder and louder and more compressed. Look at this progression of a remastered copy of the Beatles song throughout the years. As you can see, by the year 2000, it's basically just a sausage. How do we control these things? Alright, so the threshold. That's the loudness at which the compression is applied. Anything that crosses this threshold, if it's downward compression, or below it, if it's upward compression, will be compressed or expanded. Ratio is the amount of compression being applied. Attack is the amount of time for compressor kicks in. Release is the amount of time for the compressor effect fades out. The knee changes the behavior of the threshold once it's crossed. Hardening is a quick change and soft knee is a slow change. Makeup gain is a setting that you can turn on in order to automatically boost the gain to compensate for the gain you lost from compression. It's a good feature. You want to use this usually. Especially if you're, you don't really know what you're doing yet and you're still learning compression, makeup gain is a good option. We have the output. This is a manual gain you can do after the compression. There are two different settings you can set up within compression. Uh, it'll change the way the compressor behaves. So peak settings respond purely to the peak level of the signal. The second anything crosses the threshold, it'll respond immediately with the compression. RMS produces a more relaxed version of compression that is more closer to the human's perception of loudness. A limiter is a downward compressor with a ratio of 10 to 1 or higher. Obviously meant to have a stronger effect than a compressor. It limits the level to a certain threshold, thus the name, limiter. A compressor will smoothly reduce the gain, while a limiter will prevent any gain from passing the threshold at all. Now we're going to talk about limiter controls. They're basically kind of similar to a compressor. The only two things that are different are the look ahead and the ceiling. Compressors react when they see a transient coming. The look ahead is meant to give the compressor more time to see these transients and therefore not let any of the initial transients pass through. And the ceiling is the level at which to not exceed. Multiband compressors and compressors split into compressing different frequencies called bands. You can adjust the compression to behave any way you want for each band individually. And that's the beauty of multiband compression. I wouldn't recommend the beginner to pick up multiband compression though, just because it's a fairly dangerous tool. You can destroy the tone of whatever sound you're working on pretty quickly with it. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna be showing you guys all the different compressors we have in Ableton. These are all of them. The compressor, the glue compressor, the multiband dynamics, aka the multiband compressor, and the limiter. I'm gonna teach you how to use all of them real quick, except for the multiband compressor. That one is more for advanced compression. So um, deleting that one real quick, I just want you guys to know it exists. All right, I'm gonna teach you guys all the controls on a compressor real quick. All right, so at the top left here, we have the ratio. Turn that to the right to turn it up, turn it to the left to turn it down. One to one is as low as it goes. If you want it to go the other way, you're gonna to wanna to use an expander. 
Then there's the attack and release here and the auto release button if you don't like setting the release yourself. Then you can change the threshold here. You can open up some different settings down here as well. You can change the look at it here, the knee, the type of algorithm. You can get a different view of it as well. I like this one. You can change the threshold here, the output. You can change the, the mode. It could be peak, RMS, expansion. You turn on and off the makeup gain here at the top right. And you can change the dry wet signal at the bottom right here. And don't forget you can enable it at the top here. Or hide and show the side chain. Next we have the glue compressor. It's set up fairly similarly. As you can see, there's a attack and release ratio, threshold, makeup gain, so auto makeup gain. There's a soft clip which changes the wave distortion. If you're ever curious about any of these, you can read the tool tip at the bottom left here. You can change the range of the compression down here on the glue compressor, as well as the dry wet signal. Then we have a limiter which is set up fairly simply. You just change the input and then you have a look at it here and then you got your release and you got your ceiling. Not much to it. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys the application of it in the song. All right, if you guys saw my, if you guys saw my basic EQ lesson, I also use this beat in that one. So we're gonna use the same beat and the same changes from it. So let's listen to the song and see how we can apply compression to this. I think I might be able to shape the kick a little bit with some compression. So I'm gonna put a compressor on the kick. Then I am going to bring down the threshold. Let's leave on the makeup gain. So as you can see, I brought down the threshold and I start playing with the ratio. I'm honestly just gonna move around the settings till it starts sounding good. It's kind of hard to really explain what to do on a compressor when you're shaping a sound. You just play around with it, but you have to know what you're going for first. Now that I got it sounding pretty cool, I'm going to play with the dry wet knob so it sounds even better than that. Right about there sounds perfect for me. That's one use for compression. Another way to use it, we can use it to make our song a little bit louder. So I'm going to check it out in clip view real quick. And I'm gonna see what it peaks at. We can check that out on the bottom right here, kind of middle bottom right. You can refresh it a few times if you want. Honestly, you don't want to refresh it while you're letting the song play if you're trying to figure out what it peaks at. So I'm gonna do that. Then put on a compressor and, and I'm gonna prove to you guys that it's gonna be a little bit lower, therefore allowing us to make it louder. Okay, so about one, negative 1.42. So I'm put a compressor on it. I think I'm just gonna use a glue compressor. Glue compressor is kind of simple. It's more made for a master bus. It's a good time to use it right now. So I'm gonna put it on there. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use no makeup gain. I'm just gonna try to get in a little compression and we'll make it sound a little better too. So I think a good way to approach this is you bring down the threshold and let it activate a little bit. And then you mess with the attack release settings till you get the timing sounding right. And then you mess with the range if it sounds too strong. And then if it still sounds too strong, use the dry slash wet signal. And as you can see, the new peak volume is negative 1.62. Now we can turn up the song an extra 0.2 decibels. It's not much, but it should show you how it could be useful. Oh God, it started raining. And let's compare before and after. So before. Okay, 
and after. So as you can tell, it brought everything a little bit closer together. It makes it sound a little more colorful. And that is how you use a compressor. Okay guys, that's it for this lesson on compression basics. I'm your host, Weaver Beats from BassGorilla.com. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and check me out on my own YouTube channel at Weaver Beats. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.